Hello everyone, uh, my name is Lu Yunjiang. I'm a technology analyst from ID TechX. Today we're very happy to have Steve from REN RFID um, with us to tell more about the organizations and RFID technologies. So Steve, over to you to introduce yourself. Yeah, thanks very much. I'm Steve Halliday. I'm the president of the REN RFID Alliance. The Alliance is an organization put together to help market REN RFID, that is passive UHF RFID. We currently have about 160 members worldwide in the Alliance, and they cover all aspects of the technology from the chip tag, excuse me, the tag chip manufacturers through reader manufacturers, systems integrators, solution providers, and end users, and an important part of what we're trying to do. So we know RFID is a technology has been massively used in the uh, e-passport and, and the bank card. So what is the new market segment now we see recently? So, so the nice thing about RAIN RFID, um, it's a technology that has lots of different applications. The ability to go with a technology that reads over large distances, up to 15 meters, means we can get involved in applications in all sorts of ways. So one of the things that's really hot right now is the retail apparel industry. Uh, this, this industry is growing dramatically and we see many retail stores using RAIN RFID tags on all of the goods in their stores. But other areas where, where rain is growing fast include aviation. I IATA has recently passed um, a resolution that says that all airline bag tags will include rain RFID tags in 2020. So that will mean a rapid growth in the use of the technology as we move forward. We also have applications um, in food management uh, where food is tracked all the way from the farm all the way through to the, the store that sells it so that they know the history of the food, they know where it came from, and if in the cases of a recall is necessary, then they can easily encompass that. Mm. We know that for food uh, industry, it's important to know the, where they are, and, and also what's more important is the temperature and humidity and things. So I know that you have a new chance that try to put sensor together with your technology, isn't it? So what's the uh, advancement of it? So, so that's exactly right. RAIN RFID has the ability not only to, to uniquely identify things, but um, RAIN chips can include a bus interface on the chip, on the tag, so that it can talk to sensors like temperature and pressure, humidity, and provide information about that food. One of the, the members of the RAIN Alliance here on the RAIN Pavilion at this show is doing exactly that, and we can talk to them. Mm -hmm. Do you want to show us? Sure, come on around the corner and we'll talk to Infratap. Gary. I'm Gary Saxer, Chief Evangelist for InfraTap. We make sensor tags, temperature sensing tags. The temperature sensor communicates with the RAIN and the NFC uh, uh, chips in order to be able to communicate the answer to the question, how fresh is the product being monitored? The idea is to be able to take and know what the temperature is, know what's going on. As you can see over here, there's a, a variety of numbers. This is the amount of freshness remaining in that product. This one at 81 is quite fresh. This one at 50, something happened to it. By giving you the answer to the question, how fresh is it, this is a unique solution. Rather than get tremendous amounts of data, we get one piece of information, how fresh in it, and then you can make actions depending on that particular product. Mm -hmm. So how do you supply the power for the sensor and uh, how many different technology you put here to communicate? This, this tag contains one battery in it. The battery powers the sensor, not the RFID chips. This has two RFID chips, a RAIN and an NFC chip inside of it so that you can use the phone and the built-in application that we have on the phone or you can use, of course, a long distance uh, RFID uh, antenna to do that. Let's see if we can um, reach out here. We're going to take our application called Fresh Time Mobile. Fresh Time Mobile is available on the Android App Store. Fresh Time Mobile can be used in order to be able to grab data off of 
a specific tag here. And so let's go out here and have it take a look at this particular tag. You can see that we look for the, uh, in this case, the, the NFC antenna. And this is telling us the temperature, how many uh, alerts have happened here, and what's going on inside this tag. The idea is that you get the answer to your question, how fresh is the product? How much shelf life remains in the product without having to download a tremendous amount of data? Now, if you want to get a tremendous amount of data, you can, and the, the tag can provide that for you. But if you just want the answer to hundreds or dozens of tags at a time, just using the answer of the number of fresh time points gives you the answer of what you wanted. Okay, great. My Thanks, pleasure. Gary. Thank you, Steve. We'll move on now and see some of the other uh, vendors who are here on the Rain Pavilion. Uh, Nedcart is here, and, and Martin is going to talk to us a little bit about tag packaging. Yeah, hello, you all. Um, we are Nedcart. We are based in the Netherlands. Uh, we have our clean room uh, facility factory in the Netherlands, but also in Shanghai, China, and sales office in, uh, in Singapore. Uh, our background is in IC packaging, IC module assembly, uh, including uh, testing and personalization. So you probably recognize a smart card, for instance, with a gold-plated uh, module inside. We produce that, we make that uh, based on the wafers we receive from our customers. We get the uh, ICs and we put them inside, wire bonding, uh, etc. Uh, but we do more. We are also into RFID. Uh, RFID, we do transponder, antenna, and, 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 and tag. Yes. This, is, uh, this is an example of, of, of that. Uh, but after this, and the main reason we are here, is also to, sh also to show our uh, possibilities to do IC packaging around UHF, RAIN RFID, or UHF uh, RFID in general, or HF, where we have designed together also partly with, with our partners a uh, package for RFID ICs. So it's a product we have today and that we also sell to the market so you can purchase this directly from us. What is it and what is the purpose? Basically I can best show you with this and then you come to the conclusion that you hardly see anything. Well that's exactly the idea with RFID. And that's also exactly the idea to show you how tiny this is. So what I see here, uh, what you see here is an empty uh, PCB. And on the PCB, you basically see a black dot. That black dot here compared to uh, a match is a packaged IC. So inside this package, there is a chip, a UHF RFID chip. Uh, at this stage, we use Impinch and NXP. And together with the antenna, you have the uh, capability now to make any device uh, RFID uh, traceable uh, or you can authenticate uh, a product during its life cycle, so the complete product life cycle. That's a little bit the idea. Cool. Yep. Okay. Welcome. Try to do my best. So we'll move on round and Toru is going to talk to us a little bit here about Denso and their readers and what they can do for us. Mm -hmm. okay. So, Denso is a Japanese automotive component manufacturer. That's what famous uh, before. But um, one of the Denso divisions manufacture RFID readers, scanners. Yeah. Handheld RFID scanners. We have compact size, affordable but stationary scanners as well. Um, it connects to a either. Oh, it's sleep. <laughs> I noticed that this is your RFID tag, right? So, but it doesn't look like one. It just like look like the normal one we have in the. Oh yes. Right. Yeah. Because those are tags put on the uh, like shirt. But uh, we don't we don't do the tags. We make scanners, uh, readers. So this is uh, for uh, POS, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. 
you put this, and then it shows up on the POS screen. So it makes it faster, eliminating the waiting line at the cashier. So what's the main difference between each uh, devices? Like, what, what, what's the difference between the readers? Oh, so this is for the retail, you know, store application, right? Um, but these are uh, in the warehouse, uh, <laughs> back room, for inventory count. So it's more powerful. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you, Tara. Thank you. <laughs> Now we'll move over to Voyantic, who uh, specialize in quality control of, of RFID systems and quality measurements. Timo will tell us a little bit about Voyantic services. Yeah. Yes. Hi, I'm uh, Teemu from uh, Voyantic, and we specialize in uh, quality and performance testing of uh, RFID and NFC from R&D to manufacturing. So we have uh, products for uh, R&D, quality testing, so antenna designers would use our equipment in their uh, R&D labs to verify, uh, verify the designs and way finalize the designs, make it optimal for each application. Then uh, in a manufacturing side, each of those billions of RFID tags that are being manufactured, our testers test that every one of those individual RFID labels actually work as specified. So we're, we're all about the quality and performance of the uh, RFID. Uh -huh. So you test each of them. So how you do it? Uh, uh, well, in, in the video you actually see one example. So typical way the tags are manufactured, they are they are in rolls. So the, the labels on rolls, and you just run it through the reel-to-reel -reel machine. And while it's running in high speeds, we can actually determine that they work. Mm -hmm. So we are we're actually uh, we're communicating with each stack on very high speed and that way determining that it's uh, working correctly mm -hmm. as specified. Mm -hmm. So how many percentage of the, uh, the one work and the one failed? Uh, Briefly. Typically coming out of the production line, it's 99.9 .9 something percent oh. are good. But in most applications, or a lot of applications, you need 100%. Mm -hmm. uh, healthcare being one example, if there is a failing DAC, uh, it can be a big, big risk. Uh, mm -hmm. Another good example is marathon races. Mm -hmm. It's not a health risk, or, or, but if a DAC or where the timing is based on marathon races mm -hmm. doesn't work, someone doesn't get time, so it would be very annoying. They, they need 100%, so that's yeah. why we need to fix that point something percentage or okay. that fail. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, team. So we'll go on round, and our next vendor on the pavilion is a secure tag, and Shelton's going to tell us a little bit about the services that, that they offer. All right. So SAG is an RFID transponder manufacturer in Taiwan. The core technology in SAG is we have the ability to design and fine-tune the antennas in different scenarios, such as, uh, as everybody knows that UHF the, uh, frequency is very sensitive to the metals, liquids, stick to the body, and we have the solution in design fine tune uh, of antenna and frequency in order to in order to adapt the uh, environment like dense metal environments, uh, metal environments, liquid solutions stick to the body. If you put a wristband onto the body, you can see three meters of uh, free range. We also have the product energy harvesting function. Now we initiate uh, harvesting the power from the reader, and it gives the power to the, any sensors or LED lights here to initiate the function of the sensor itself. So SAG plays ourselves as a transponder solution provider in RFID and to produce customers different specs of needs in different applications. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm particularly interested in this one. You said you do the energy harvesting. Right, we do. So what type of technology you use and how you storage the energy and uh, you, you use it for the uh, ID light, and right. how, is it enough to support a sensor? It is. We have, we will design, we will design this antenna mm -hmm. and we will make sure there's enough energy that we have from the readers. Mm -hmm. It gives the power all the way to the sensors 
or any uh, uh, LED lights will initiate the power mm -hmm. to turn on the functionality of the sensor itself or LED lights as well. Mm -hmm. The other thing I'm interested to see is you have different distance, three meter, nine meter, how you tune it. Right, how so we design the antennas and we give the rear range. When the liquid over the body will attach into the tax, sometimes this uh, tag will be influenced by the body water. UHF frequency, nobody doesn't do well with the water. But we oh, found yeah. a solution to design the antennas and fight to that to accommodate with a water solution. In that way, this uh, tax, UHF rain tax, still works well. So nobody is nine, uh, nine meters in here. If you stick to the water, you will still have a seven meter of a rear range. Okay. This tag here, tag into the body, you gives you three meters. So you'll be able to track people by wearing this wristbands of a rain tag. Okay, so this one can be used underwater as well. Yes, accommodate the water, okay. not in the water, but <laughs> attached to the human body and attached to the bottle uh, liquid stuff. Okay, right. very interesting. Yes. Great. Thank you, Shao. Thank you, Steve. So next on our list is Murata. Murata specializes in very, very small tags. And so uh, Jerry's going to talk to us a little bit about how those small tags can be used in specialist applications. Gary. Yep. Just want to make sure I got this. Mm -hmm. Hi. Jerry Ebers with Murata Electronics. Um, what makes Murata a little bit unique for uh, the RFID and NFC technologies is the size and dimensions of our physical tags. So in this particular example, as we presented earlier today, uh, is the small physical size of the actual components that we do versus the traditional type of inlay products. Traditional type inlay is roughly three to four inches, where the Murata tag is quite a bit unique as far as the physical size. Same industry standards, physically different sizes and physically for different applications. The read range on the traditional tag is somewhere in the range of four to maybe seven meters. The smaller individual tags are typically used in applications that are roughly one centimeter. So in this particular case, we're able to read or communicate these particular tags and we can send the information using the small tag after it's been embedded possibly into So we're able to see the embedded tag we're using in the actual unit. Basically scan that, and from the information, we actually can pull the, the serial number into the database. So what's the technology, and what's the new technique you use to make it so small? Um, Yard is a great packaging company. So we're using our ceramic substrate material, and we basically do the coil pattern of the antenna into the ceramic substrate, do a flip chip dye, and then cover with resin epoxy. So we can basically package in very, very small packages, similar to what you see here. And we have variations of it as well. So apart from glasses, what's the other uh, applications for it? Because they are very small, so I can easily see it. It could be embedded in many, many different... Yeah, that, that's a very good point, because that's some of the discussion we had earlier at the, earlier this afternoon. The applications are basically anything that cannot use an inlay, something of a large tag, cannot be used on an application like this. These are also permanent, so these devices are inserted and they're permanent to the actual device. So it could be lipstick, it could be consumer products, it could be medical healthware, uh, test vials, any type of medical application as well. Something needs a permanent identification and using a RAIN RFID tag. Uh -huh. The other thing is like, um, um, it's so small, then how much it is for, for each of the tag? The cost? Yeah, the cost. Um, the pricing. I prefer not to get into pricing. <laughs> they're more. They're, they're more cost. Um, they're more costly than the traditional type inlays. Inlays are very inexpensive um, because this is kind of the highest volume that that's in the industry. This is a little bit more niche, so our market is certainly a lot smaller. So we're not able to get the same cost in this particular. App. Jerry, I have one question for you. Yes. So for some security reason, like easy, all the different readers could read all the RFID tag, or they are can be. It's a really good question, and so the basic uh, air interface standards that we've set up allows for 
any reader to read any tag that is working with that air interface standard. However, we've also built into the, the standard the ability to include security. So we can actually make it so that a tag will only talk to a reader that it's supposed to talk to. Okay. So they authenticate to each other and then it will only talk to this. This means if a bad guy comes along and wants to read tags, he won't necessarily be able to do that because he won't be able to authenticate his reader to those tags. Okay. So our next company that we're going to talk to is Aware Innovations. Um, Aware is a solutions provider providing uh, software and solutions. And, and Bart Ivy is going to talk to us a little bit about some of the things that they can do. Bart, if you'd like to give us a little overview of what Aware does. Hi, how are you doing? Um, so Aware Innovations, we're a system integrator. We provide uh, customers with uh, engineering support to determine uh, you know, what type of technologies to implement into the process and to um, help them connect that information, collect the data and for that. So we have, a, we have a mobile application that helps connect things uh, and things can, can vary from uh, computers, from uh, any, any basically anything that you can tag. So if your purse, your shoes, all can be tagged for various reasons and tracked. Uh, individually or in lots uh, conditions and what we do is help build that solution together. My job as the uh, chief solution officer is, is work with companies. I just recently worked with a company to, who makes uh, toothpaste and we were designing them a solution to provide real-time tracking of uh, components uh, of the tanks for traceability and for location so that they'll be able to integrate that into their overall sort of manufacturing process. The calling sessions will resume until 6 p.m., but the exhibition is now closing. From all of us at ID Tech X, thank you for joining us. See you next year, and thank you for your support. So from for your point of view, mm -hmm. um, what is the main difficulty for uh, a customer to adapt this technology? Really, there's, uh, the most difficulty that the customers have is really, um, it's really not there, because uh, it's easily adaptable. But uh, you know, it all comes around uh, them understanding what their return on investment is. So that's really uh, them understanding that they need to define, you know, what it is that they want to achieve and what the problems are that they want to eliminate, and turn that into a return on investment. So you know how much you want to expend because you can go, for example, you know, the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office here, uh, the IT Asset Management. They invested $3 million, and then today they're saving a $1 million every year mm -hmm. over implementing this technology. A huge investment up front, but they realized that there was a return on investment. You know, basically two and three quarters of a year, they were able to recoup all that, and now every every year is basically a savings of a million bucks. Great. Thanks, Bob. We really appreciate it. Thank you. So we'll go over to one more today, and that is Teslonix. Um, Paul Slavy will talk to you a little bit about a new way of using RFID readers with our RAIN RFID. Yes, what we hello. What we're presenting here is a new uh, type of a reader, which is a distributed reader system. Uh, the way it works is you deploy a few of them, they work together, and the end result is that you get you transfer about ten times more power to RAIN RFID tags or other endpoints, such as, for example, battery-free sensors. So we are able to reach out much farther and use far fewer devices to achieve better results. And the applications take us away from inventory, but also include IoT sensors and ability to get sensory information, for example, temperature measurements, uh, humidity, vibration, and what have you, from devices which are basically unpowered, they have no batteries, no wires or anything. So it's a pretty amazing new technology which is going to be widely deployed and will possibly revolutionize the whole RAIN world. Yeah, actually I want to know more about this. So the whole system don't have a battery, so it's still a passive RFID. Yes, passive, R passive RFID, is the devices, the RFID tags are standard tags, passive, right? Okay. There could be also RFID integrated sensors without power, without batteries because our system delivers 10 times more power from a fixed infrastructure, so it illuminates those tags 
or sensors wakes them up and lets them to do some useful functions, such as, for example, transmitting back the ID information mm -hmm. or transmitting sensory information from the environment. Mm -hmm. That's how it works. Okay, so how about the reader? So the reader is like um, the typical RFID reader yeah. that you carry around, or it's like station? No, it's a special, it's a fixed infrastructure reader, okay. right? And they, so they, are, they have special sauce that makes it all possible, so you mm -hmm. end up with 10 times more power. So you can use far fewer of those devices to cover large areas. Mm -hmm. So what's the distance? You would well, it's, we can go about five times the distance of, okay. of alternative existing technologies, and we can use far fewer of those devices. So you can you can you can have significant cost savings, about at least half price for a complete solution. No wires, no power. Very exciting. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. You're welcome. So, so, yeah, so, so you got a chance to see a flavor of some of the things that's happening in the RAIN RFID world. Um, there are many other companies, both here and members of the Alliance, that are doing equally innovative stuff. Uh, and we hope that, that you guys will all come along and, and join and see what we're doing in a different way. So how do you think about the market in five years or even ten years? Do you think, uh, <laughs> yeah, so what's your opinion? or RFID market is going to be in five years? So I, I think we're seeing such strong growth at the moment that, that although it's very hard to predict, we talk about the fact that in 2017, um, we delivered about 12.8 billion rain tags into the marketplace. By 2020, we think we'll easily be delivering over 20 billion tags a year. And that doesn't include some of the big projects that are coming up. Um, with IATA mandating rain tags in bag tags, that will add another 4 billion a year to those numbers. So in five to 10 years, there's just going to be a massive increase in the amount of rain RFID that's out there. We really are providing the main endpoint for the Internet of Things. And almost everything that is not a smart thing already will become smart with the use of RAIN RFID. Mm -hmm. uh, last question is, how do you enjoy the ID Tech Tech show this year? So, so it, yeah, it's been a great show. We've had some good visitors, we've had some end users, we've had um, quite a few startup companies have stopped by to try and find out more about the technology. And, and we've had companies that we didn't really think were going to be involved in our technology who, who've asked a lot of questions. So it's been a great show for us. We really enjoyed being here. Thank you very much for coming this year. Thank you very much. It was a great